Strange sleep. The gates swung open to welcome the dead. The ones who came through were not human beings, but demons from hell. They moved slowly across the bridge into the world that had been waiting for them so long. In front they carried a wheeled litter bearing their lord's body on its way back home. In triumph at having defeated the forces arrayed against it. Behind the demon warriors marched those who'd accompanied them on this quest and would now have to face whatever might be awaiting them. As the last demon crossed over into the light of day, his eyes fell upon an odd sight below him. It was something he recognized as being important even if he couldn't immediately say why. He felt certain he could find out later. First, there was some unfinished business. Something only he and the others present understood about what was going on here. And then, and then he knew where he needed to go next. The priest stood behind one of the pews while a young man lit candles. One candle after another was placed atop a large stone table that occupied center stage within the chapel. Each time he finished lighting one of these small flames, more followed. Before too long, a bright white flame burned brightly amid the dark wood paneling surrounding the room. By the end, dozens of them filled with fire flickered away in rhythmically timed waves throughout the structure. You know you're not really supposed to be here, said the priest without looking up from his book. The young man sitting beside him nodded solemnly, but didn't respond further. The priest took a sip of wine before responding. The cool liquid rolled around his mouth, helping to mask the anger he felt inside. Finally, he turned toward the young man and said, If I recall correctly, the scriptures specifically state that hell cannot exist in heaven or vice versa. The ground began shaking beneath their feet. Soon they were forced to stand by clinging to each other for support as a loud rumble echoed through the church's interior. Outside the window glass broke apart under pressure, and fragments exploded outward into the night air, while smoke poured through cracks between panes of thick plate glass that once held windows into which people could look out onto what had become an alien world outside. Then came an ear-splitting screech, so loud that it caused every pew on either side of the aisle to rattle violently against the walls that separated them. When it ended, silence reigned again except for an occasional shiver, running up and down both men's spines, as though something huge moved unseen all around them in preparation to attack. The priest lowered his voice. Do you see now why I told you not to come here? He asked with a hint of impatience. You're right, the young man said, nodding. He swallowed hard before continuing. I do understand why this is a bad idea. Then please leave before. A second blast of thunderous sound shook the building, more strongly than ever before, causing everything in sight. Walls, furnishings, altar, bookshelves, floor, ceiling, and even the priest himself, to vibrate furiously. And then, the young man heard the words spoken softly yet distinctly inside his head. I'm waiting. He blinked twice, slowly. His lips curled back in an expression somewhere between a grimace and a grin. It wasn't easy, but he managed to answer. I'm ready. What was that? Asked the priest, sounding shaken. Nothing to be concerned about, he replied dismissively. The rumble grew louder for a few seconds until it finally ceased altogether with a final ear-shattering bang. Then they saw it. A glowing red shape growing larger by the second as it moved steadily toward them through the large doorway at the far end of the church. The priest began chanting loudly, I call upon the name of Jesus. I cast out the demon that has come among us. When he finished, another red light appeared at the rear of the advancing figure, moving away from its body like water flowing downward through space while leaving behind a trail of sparkles. As it came closer, the priest recognized what looked like the silhouette of a human male with horns protruding upward above his temples. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I command you to depart this place and return to your prison beneath the earth. The light stopped and hovered over the top of the pews, completely filling the entire front portion of the room. The two men continued to watch as the demon stared down at them without responding in any way. Finally, when it became obvious there'd be no reaction from the demon, the priest spoke up again. I beg you, he said, bowing his head before lowering himself onto one knee on the cold stone floor. We beseech you, return home. He lifted both hands before him and shouted at the demon standing before them. It's time to go. Leave now or face. He didn't finish. Instead, a second voice entered their heads and took control. It wasn't a voice he'd ever heard before, but he knew it instantly. It was the same deep timbre he'd heard in his dreams. Your fate. The young man closed his eyes, his brow furrowed in concentration. Then he nodded once. A sound of thunder echoed throughout the building. 
A blast of intense heat washed across them, forcing them to turn away. When it ended, all that remained of the church where they stood was an enormous pile of rubble. Stone blocks, wood beams, pieces of furniture, broken glass, charred corpses, ash and dust, and a single, lone figure that still stood unharmed. What do you want with me, then? Why have you called upon me here tonight? I asked the priest as the demon approached slowly, while remaining just out of reach from its pursuer. To help you, replied the demon in its own malevolent voice as it neared enough to be clearly seen by both men, you are to bring salvation to this world. What does that mean, exactly? Asked the priest, frowning as he did so. The souls within the city will rise up against those who oppress them and take back what is rightfully theirs. And who decides what belongs to whom? He questioned, narrowing his eyes suspiciously. The demon's response came not in words, but through the images in their heads. As clear and distinct as any photograph or film clip, the two witnesses saw people marching together down the streets, armed with guns, clubs, knives, swords, pitchforks, and more besides, heading toward a large prison where several dozen demons waited inside. They were ready to free them from confinement, or kill everyone else present. The demons said nothing. Is this a trick? Said the young man staring at the image before him. You can't fool us into believing you'd actually show us something like that without being sure we'll agree with you when it happens. It doesn't matter, answered the demon in its own voice. The ones who live in the city must know they've been oppressed and imprisoned for too long. That they deserve better than they're receiving under your rule. And they need someone, a leader, to provide them guidance and leadership. You are to lead these poor creatures to freedom once again, just as I promised, so that my master may rise to power over all the earth once more. The priest's eyes narrowed even further as he studied the demon's face carefully. But why me? Why are you after me specifically? The demon paused a moment in contemplation. You are the one chosen. Chosen? Chosen for what? What does this have to do with me? Who chose me? Why? The demon shook his head. That is no concern of yours now. Then tell me who you are, demanded the priest, holding his ground despite the fact that his hands trembled visibly beneath his cassock. I am a bad man, said the demon, pausing briefly before adding, the destroyer. And what makes you think I will ever follow you or anyone else on this planet, that alone help free demons from hell itself? Because you already believe there is such a place. The priest considered this as he stared at the creature standing beside him and nodded slowly. Finally, he asked, so how exactly does it work? 